ماشي على طريقي طريقي سيدي ما بقى حد يمسك ايدي ايزي فلو على مودي ماشي بريسي اعطيك بارز وانا اتكلم عربيسي الف با تا تا جيم حا خا كلامك ما له قيمه ابي لافي ها ها صار كلام دون سلام لسانك صار سام خليك مكانك انا ماشي على قدام ما ادري كيف تتكلم بين كل كلمه ترمش تيمه انا رافع راسي او جي انا اصير لحالي احسن من الفيك ما بيشيل عادي اجلس في البيت فلكس يلا دوسي شقيت فما بريد داف لوسي بلوش لغات دو بس ما في شي بلوشي جاي تتفلسف فنا ونعلش فيلي سوفي قلي على المطبخ يلا روحي اوكي عادي تبقى كفسة ولا سوشي ما قوش انا ببش انا بيعف عالي حتى لو كده انت بجاد الراسي عالي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to episode 66 of the Mo Show podcast um, I have a unique guest in, in the studio today. She's um, what, what I think Saudi Arabia's number one rapper. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into much details uh, about her intro. I'm going to let her introduce herself to you. Jara, thank you for sparing some time and coming to the studio. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Mara. This platform is like super dope to be here. So I'm excited. It means a lot. You know that the first time, uh, yeah, the first time I saw you, was about a year and a half ago. I want to say um, mid-2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about a year and a half ago. Um, you released something. Yeah. And I think a lot of people got to know you for the first time. Yeah. On that. Yeah, it's when you released the anniversary of the podcast. Same yeah. day, Yom Al-Watani. Yeah, so, it was oh, yeah, the Yom Al-Watani thing. Yeah. And that did really well on YouTube, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I kind of did it because I knew it was going to go well. I don't want to sound cocky, but... Uh, I started off just doing everything in English, you know, and and then I realized I was like, no, I think uh, I need to put in, in a little bit of Arabic there. So that's why I did 966. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much where everything kind of started to start, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. How long before then did you realize that this is something that you want to do, rap? Um, There wasn't like, it wasn't really planned out. It was kind of like by coincidence, so it's Um I was in Sweden and it just kind of like was my way of speaking to myself and letting it out. So I would just write to myself, write in my notes. And I was like, oh, this sounds, you know, this is a cool hobby to have. And um, it just kind of all happened all of a sudden. You know, I I didn't plan to go into music. It was never like, yes, this is what I want to do. Like, no, not really. Just kind of like it happened very organically, you know. So, yeah. Some of the best things in life are the ones that just happen organically Mm -hmm. and you roll with it. Yeah. Pretty much. Can you, I mean, can you believe, looking back, that you have done what you've done so far in the music business? Did you pinch yourself sometimes saying, what the? (laughs) I mean, I don't feel like I did much yet. I feel like I accomplished like 1% of what I plan on doing or what I want to do. But yeah, when I look back, like when I see the stuff that I did, which isn't much to me, but I'm still like, oh, like when when did all of this happen? Like it wasn't it wasn't planned, you know, Um, especially when you do something as a hobby and not as a job, you don't have a lot of pressure from yourself. You just kind of do it because you want to do it. You know, there's no ulterior motive or something or a specific goal or a specific number. I'm just I want to do it, you know, good intentions. I just want to put it out there and see the reaction. So, yeah, I mean, I like how everything is just flowing and whatever is written is coming to me you know no pressure no nothing forced you know so is that when Jara was born when you started rapping all your life until that point it was Yara um I mean she came a little bit before the rap uh kind of with my style so um at hijab when I was like 12 years old I was in international school in Jeddah and I was one of like the only hijabat from us maybe three out of like a thousand students uh was wearing a scarf hijab and when I went to Sweden I actually like dealt with a lot of you know looks a lot of racism it was the first time I experienced like racism and actually back then it was Yara when I went there um there's actually a social experiment that I did in Sweden it's not on YouTube anymore but it was on YouTube Zaman um uh, so I stood in the street and I had a poster and it said, I'm a Muslim and that makes me complete the sentence. So people came and they wrote stuff. And the first person that came actually like wrote terrorist. So that was like my first, you know, I guess, 
um, social experiments, social media appearance or something. And that was Yara. I was like a cute little mahajaba and stuff. And then from there, I kind of transitioned to like, okay, how can I live life there as a as a Muslim without kind of drawing attention to myself? So I was like, let me let me try it with a hoodie. So I kind of went through phases where it was like a cap and then a hoodie and then a beanie and then a hoodie. And then now it just kind of, this is my style. So this is my way of kind of being modest. And then Jada kind of started, whenever the hood comes on, I'm like, yo, what's up, it's Jada. You know, whenever I like have my tarhan, I'm like, hi, it's Yara, nice to meet you. So it's very like, you know, um, alter ego, I would say. So yeah, Jada kind of comes with the style, with the drip, with the hoodie. Um, Jada's Jada's an intimidating name. Really? Yara is a very nice, friendly, you yeah. know. Yeah. Jada is someone who you probably don't want to bump into in an alley. I mean, um, I don't know. Yeah. That's that's the, that's just the way I'm, it's coming off. That I don't know why. Maybe yeah. maybe because you own that name, maybe. and it comes with attitude. Yeah. And I don't mean attitude in a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Attitude could mean just mean personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I think it's I, I think it's it's pretty refreshing yeah. that that you have these you know two um, Harvey Two Face, whatever you want to call it, yeah. like alter egos. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Gemini, so it's, it's <laughs> not a shocker, you know. So. Rap being a male dominant genre, yeah. let's say, mm -hmm. all over the world, yeah, even more so over here. Mm -hmm. uh, did you face any pushback? You know, people saying, you know, what are you doing, your girl? Why are you rapping? I mean, not really. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're a woman. Like, it's probably harder for you. And I'm like, I'm very grateful that like us right now as like like female Arabs in general, us trying to do something, you get more supported than being like, oh, why are you doing that? You know, like more pushback. So I actually always say that, I feel like if I was a male, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I wouldn't be getting the recognition or getting the support that I am getting now as a female. So being a female actually worked in my favor more than it kind of pushing me back or holding me back. So relax, I don't think I really got a pushback. And I don't think I saw the bad side of the industry because like I have I have Baba with me like all the interviews all the shoots all the studio sessions Baba's always with me so when anyone wants to try Baba's like hold up you know so it's alhamdulillah like things uh, you know he looks really... like secret service just sitting there looking at me <laughs> I'm like minding my questions here <laughs> my security guard <laughs> like, you know so, yeah. what a sweetheart you know I, I have a question about him further down but I'm not gonna I'm gonna break protocol mm -hmm. How do how would you describe your father in in a word or two when you think of him? How do you describe him? He's my homie. He's my best friend. He's super supportive. I don't think I'd be like doing this if it wasn't for him. You know, um, going into an industry like music or social media or anything like that in general, it's very scary as a woman. And just having him like supporting me and just be like, no, you got this. It's okay. I got you. You got this. And I'm like, that's the best support I can get. You know, like Baba over a million followers. You know what I mean? So I'm glad, alhamdulillah, that I have him by my side and that he believes and he knows like what what you know what my platform inshallah will be capable of doing so so yeah yeah it's my homie so I, I got to know what it feels like to be a father five years ago so mm -hmm. i know a little bit i have a little bit of experience compared to what he has yeah and in my little bit of experience i can tell you that from a hundred dads in saudi arabia mm -hmm. okay i think one percent one out of 99 would be okay mm -hmm. with the unique industry mm -hmm. that you are in. Yeah. And for that, I salute this man. I do. Because not many fathers would want their daughters to go that route. Yeah. I, I want to be the kind of father that, that, that your father is. Mm -hmm. and you know, no, what's wrong with going this route? She's an yeah. artist. Mm -hmm. Why does she have to be in banking? Why does she have to be in law? Why does she have to be a doctor or a, mm -hmm. this is this is an art. This is yeah. what she's going to practice. Yeah. And, 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 maybe she'll you know be the first to actually represent saudi in this genre in this business because mm -hmm. we never had that mm -hmm. yeah and we live in a time when it's all about female empowerment right. in everything not selective female empowerment yeah. yeah so it's special 
it, it's it's rare. Yeah. And all I can do is say that I strive to to to, to want to empower my kids, my daughter, inshallah, I have one on the way. Inshallah. The way that he's empowering you. Mm-hmm. It's like I've got I've got goosebumps. I'm getting a bit emotional here. Yeah. Baba, um, you want to give him advice later on? <laughs> yeah. No, we, we, <laughs> yeah. we we're going to talk for sure. I, I, I need yeah. it. I need advice. Yeah. Um, that's special. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, there's a lot of times where I just kind of give up and he's like, Lesh, you know, why are you, why are you stopping? And then he, you know, he says stuff. I'm like, oh, I wish I could do an interview here. I wish I could be on this platform. And he's like, why not? And I'm like, Baba, I'm a fan, or, you know, and he's like, no, why not? Like, and that's one of the quotes that I like live by. He always says, why not? Yeah. You know, so I really, I really love that. Song. Why not? Why yeah. not? Why not? When AB Anas Bukhash was sitting in that chair two months ago, he said, I want, I, he, he dreams for a Arab culture that say, that ask themselves, why not? Because today it's why. You exactly. talking about people opening coffee shops. They don't want to expand abroad. Football players, they don't want to strive to be the best until Muhammad Salah came. Mm-hmm. It's playing Champions League final. Why not? Yeah, 100%. You know, mm-hmm. but it's, inshallah, I feel like it's it's slowly changing in the right direction. Yeah. Um, when we spoke on the phone, you had a very nice message that, you know, with, with music, we are able to educate and spread the word uh, in terms of a platform. Exactly. Um, is that something you realized early in the game? It was kind of why I started. You know, um, like I said, I'm not like a huge like music fanatic. But then um, I think the first video, music video that I saw that was like, oh, my God, I want to do this. Like this is this is the effect that I want to have on people was um, uh, I'm not racist by John Lucas. I was like, whoa, like that five minute music video uh, made a huge impact. You can read a thousand books and a thousand articles and it's not going to hit you the way that music video did. And I just that's when my love for it kind of started. And I was watching a lot of other music videos, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, like. I want to do that, you mm. know. You make a lot of statements through your music, you know. It's influential. Um, exactly. I can talk for hours. Like, yeah. who's going to sit and yeah, listen, yeah. you know? So it's Boring. Exactly. But people so. will listen to an album a yeah. hundred times. hundred, like, exactly. <laughs> like, know? the amount of people you can reach through music is insane. Especially with visuals. Like, I have a lot of songs that are unreleased, and I refuse to release them with no visuals. I feel like, you know, in this day and age... Um, you, it depends on who you market for, but there are people that are, you know, audio, there are people that are visual, and I'm like, you need to do both. You need to, like, check both tick boxes, I guess. So I would say just doing it vocals might not hit as hard as, you know, doing it videos as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. 966, I don't think would have hit if it was just my voice. So. 966, the quality of that music video mm. was up there with, like, the DJ Khalid and the Drakes of the world. Really? I'm not just... If it wasn't, I'll just not say and I'd go to the next point. Mm. But I have to stop here because I think it was as good as that cash money, young record millionaires, DJ Khaled, yeah. all that, all that, we the best, it. whatever yeah. it's called. Because like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, it, it, Wallah Hazim with the choreography, the the different zones from the dining table to the parking lot to inside the house. Yeah. And and with your permission, like as I'm talking right now, maybe we can put a small snippet on on the YouTube course, clip, yeah. and we'll put the the link to that video in the yeah. description box. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the best bit of English uh, music video to ever come out of the region. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna get emotional because that like that video, it looked like, like, like it, it was... took a lot out of you. Yeah, I mean, the story behind it was actually, it was one week before uh, Saudi National Day. And I was like, why don't I have a song out? Like, why don't I do something for Saudi National Day? And I um, I know a few, like, producers, I know a few directors, and I, like, pitched the idea. This was before I wrote it, before I recorded it. I was just like, if I want to shoot something one week before, like, will I be able? They're like, no, like, with your idea. And I just, you know, said it over the phone. They're like, oh, this is going to cost, like... 50k 100k reals like this is you know this is going to take three four five months planning you're going to need sponsors you're going to need this and i was like shut the team like they just kind of like shut me down you know and i'm like no i don't want to take that for an answer and and when someone says no to me i'm like oh my god like oh like i just get fired up and i'm like yeah let me let me prove them wrong so it was one week before national day i literally recorded at home uh found a beat on youtube recorded at home um i have my friend in uh, the, um, the u.s her name's little g she's 19 years old she's a sick producer she mixes and masters like all my songs so we've been friends for a while i was just like yo please like mix this i sent it to her 
one hour she sent it back mixed perfect i'm like okay song is ready yellow baba let's uh you know let's see what we can do in terms of locations baba? yeah baba 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 me and my videographer at the time that was it there was no third party there was like baba's was part of the team huh? yeah, yeah baba, it's not like you work yeah. and then baba look at me no he's like oh part no of he's yeah he um I mean, Baba drives me everywhere. I don't drive. Baba is like my, you know, my ride or die, literally, you know. So he takes me everywhere, um, shoots together, the planning, everything. So, yeah, I planned that music video in like three days. Um, talked to a videographer at the time and I was like, listen, I have this idea. He's like, yeah, let's go. Um, there was no budget. Uh, I... Um, yeah, I don't even know how I pulled it off. It was really hard because everyone was like, this is impossible. And yeah, my kind of shit, it didn't cost I anything. that word. Yeah. Like, I really hate that word. Yeah, I know. It's uh, It was very demotivating and it was very, like, emotional for me. And I was, like, it was very on and off. And I would, like, call locations and I was, like, yes, no. And it was it was, it was was a roller coaster. But alhamdulillah, like, it uh, came through and I'm really glad that I pushed. Did you drop you know? it on, on National Day? Yeah. So you did it in a week? Yeah. Yeah. This keeps getting crazier. Yeah, I mean, I, when I think about it, I, um, I get really emotional because it, it, it felt like it wasn't going to happen, you know? And... Um, I just feel like, you know, with that, with Baba's support, of course, pushing me. So I was like, if I didn't push myself, then it wouldn't have happened, you know? And I um, I know we're going to speak about mental health later on, but it's just, I, I do struggle with depression and I have in the past a lot. It's up and down, you know? And that time I was like, like I was very down and I was like, I you don't have that like push or that drive. And I'm like, خلص, if it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. But somehow, alhamdulillah, it uh, pushed and you know, came through while I was shooting that. I was like, Majo, I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm so down. I'm so depressed, but you know, gotta just like. You know what's crazy? You know. It, mm. None of that shows in yeah. Final Cut. Yeah, exactly. And that goes back to mental health. Like the happiest people in the world who you think they are, like Robin Williams. Yeah, exactly. Jim Carrey, for example. Yeah. They have a lot to say about mental health. Exactly. But on the surface, they look like the happiest guys and they'll crack up a room. Yeah, exactly. But I always say, look at the eyes. I think the eyes say a lot, Sarah. You know, um, don't get fooled by like manzar or hada. Look, like I think Zaman, maybe I got like one or two random DMs like five years ago or three years ago or something. They're like, can see the sadness in your eyes. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, damn, it shows, Yanni. So, so yeah, I just, I just think people should be more aware when it comes to that and don't just assume because, well, I'm posting what uh, someone's posting or whatever that we're cool. Like, you know, you can still ask. Are you good? You good? We're good. Tamam. It's very simple, you know. So, yeah. Do you do all the writing? Yeah. You do it. It's huh? actually one of my. Um, was it pet peeve? Or I mean, I kind of get annoyed when someone like asks me that because I do songs for brands and stuff like that, and they're like, "Do you write your own lyrics?" I'm like, "Of course I write my own lyrics." Like, what? What do you mean? And they're like, "Yeah, there's a lot of artists that don't." That don't I was like, "Like, I'm a I did not know what a ghostwriter is. I did not know that it existed. I thought every single artist writes their own lyrics. So I was very surprised when I, you know, uh, learned that a lot of people actually don't write their own lyrics. No, I'm like, you know, if, why a lot of people think that they don't mm -hmm. because the, the music, the the movie industry. Mm. You have writers and the art and the, the actors are just puppets. Yeah. That they repeat and they memorize. Yeah. I just and I kind of knew that you did your writing, but mm. I just wanted those who did not know and just yeah. to go on record that you actually do all your writing. How did which, you? That, that you do yeah. your own writing? Mm -hmm. When I watched 90, 966, the, the words that came out mm. were very much commensurate with your character. Mm. Like some of the words had, I just, I was 80% sure that that's something that could have been Yeah. So that's why I, I I was leaning more towards the fact that you do. Mm. I'm glad it came you know, through. The, the, the hijazi verbiage, the yeah. words. It's, yeah. 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 Alhamdulillah. I'm glad it came through like authentic. Yeah. You know? No, yeah. I mean, I, I, I interpreted it as that. Nice. I mean, even with brands, like I do songs for brands and sometimes they give me the lyrics. I'm like, no, like I'll, <laughs> I want to rewrite it. I I would never like say someone else's words or someone else's lyrics. It feels like it's then I'm just a performer. I'm yeah. not an artist. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I love that. I really do. Yeah. Schooling background, uh, you said that you, well, let's go with schooling first and mm -hmm. let's talk about your uh, major that you're gonna be going for masters in soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where was, uh, where did you start off? Where was school? Here, uh, Jeddah, uh, Jeddah Prep and Grammar School, International. Uh, yeah, my Arabic was broken when I was a kid. It was very, very broken. So I would consider English to be my first language. 
Um, and then I moved to Sweden for like I did high school there for two years. That's when I learned the language and everything. Um, then I moved back and then I went to uni here and I just freshly graduated uh, uh, majoring in international relations and diplomacy and minoring in psychology. Mm. And I graduated in English valedictorian. Sir. Yeah, it yeah, is. Graduated. Top of the class. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Now, why is it that a lot of people who come across rappers, they would immediately assume that they weren't studious? I mean, stereotypes, I guess. Right? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating just what the general consensus yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that you break that mm, narrative. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't remember who said this to me, but they were like, Belax, writing your own lyrics and being a lyricist and being a rapper, it's not easy. Like, you do have to have some brains to do that, you some know? Literature. Yeah, so I'm like, well, how can I drop out to, you know what I mean? So I, I do want to break that because I don't like that people say, um, oh, yeah, I dropped out to pursue music. I'm like, why? Like, why? Who said you have to choose? Like, that's one of the things that I live by, you know, call myself like jack of all trades. I don't like to choose one thing. Like, why do one thing when you can do it all? And especially Baba and Mama, they're like, no, like, you can do this on the side, but you should also pursue, like, studying. Because I am good at it, alhamdulillah, like, always, you know, top of my class, never skip class, never anything. Very studious. I was, like, student council president for three years for JAMA. I was student council president in school. I was very, like, you know, into school. Yeah. So, why push that aside because I want to do music? Just relax. I use what I learned and I put it shui shui, like here and there in my lyrics, you know? So I try to um, kind of combine what I learned throughout my life and, you know, in studying education and put that kind of through my music, you know? Because I feel like a lot of the stuff that I want to speak about, you know, um, important, like, important uh, um important things like just in life you know i i don't want to speak without knowledge because once you speak without knowledge it's like where where is she getting that google <laughs> you know so i don't want to be one of those people that's like um my words don't have value it's just coming out of you know I'm like no i studied this this is you know especially with psychology and mental health i'm like no i studied this it's not coming from nowhere so there's a, there's a lot of that today though huh people sp speaking without knowledge yeah. And you can detect that from a mile away. Exactly. And the quickest way to find out how stupid a person is is to let them speak. Exactly. How stupid or intelligent. Mm hmm. One hundred percent. And then you know we just we don't look for someone's like credibility or like verification. We're just like, oh yeah, oh my god, right, true. Like okay, and where's the, where's the you know the blue tick <laughs> next yeah. to your information? Like nobody knows like yeah. where that information is coming from. So yeah. just believe anything you hear. It's like no, you need to know where that you know what that person's Source. background is. Yeah. It's exactly. a lot of fake out there, isn't there? Yeah. It must lot. bother the hell out of you. Yeah. Kinda, because you bring this yeah. realness to 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 the game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I feel like, you know, with my research and like what rap is and what it originally was, I feel like they're maybe in the Arab rap game and rap game in general. Like it's not like old school rap or old school hip hop. It lost its value. Like now it's just about, oh, how can I make views? How can I get hits? You know, let's talk about money. Let's talk about girls. Let's talk about, you know, not a talk about like, you know, stuff that's actually important. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the rappers like J. Cole and NF and Kendrick and Joyner because they do speak about stuff that's that's important, yeah, you most, know? Most deaf. Yeah, exactly. So like, I just feel like that we need that here. Yeah. It's I'm not doing it for the money. I'm not doing it for fame. I'm doing it because I want to, you know, spread messages. If it's messages that I believe in, if it's messages that other people believe in, like that's why I do want to, you know, grow my platform and hear other people's stories and use that for like, you know, voicing other people's whatever they're going through mm -hmm. and kind of speaking about it, you know? That's why, like, you know, my international relations background, I feel like it will come in handy when I'm, like, trying to study the world and study people and kind of use that as a vessel to deliver messages, so. Definitely a jack yeah. of all trades. Yeah. I actually wrote a song that's unreleased before called the Jot, you know, like goat, Jot, jack of all trades. So, uh, yeah. I feel like, uh, you know, I always want to be a Jota and inshallah go to Yani, but for now, I would say, yeah, jack of all trades. You know, most of the top rappers in the world, you look at them, even if you go back to like Tupac, to like more modern day, as you said, um, Kendrick Lamar, or um, you, you just feel that there's a bit of genius in them. Mm. Eminem, for example, as a, as a lyricist. Mm. Sorry, but his ability to to put together sentences mm -hmm. and, be, and be so articulate with his words. Yeah. Can can impress an English teacher at Cambridge University. Yeah, exactly. I always used to say there's something. I was really good at math, and I was like, there's something mathematical about it. It's like there's this formula that these rappers have that yeah. no one knows about. It's just this combination of words that is like, 
yeah, it's 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 sick or, or like Timberland or Dr. Dre with their ability. Yes, I do know a bit of hip hop. Mm-hmm. I think you know more than me, Sarah. No, no chance. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> Podcasting, I might know more than. Mm. Um, so Timberland, with his ability to produce, or Dr. Dre, mm-hmm. like there is some genius there. Yeah. That would make a music teacher in one of the best music schools in the world be mm. like, that was amazing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Teach me how you did that, man. Uh, teach me yeah. how you did that. Mm. You get a Dre beat with Eminem or a Timberland with like a, with the, or, or like or like the likes of Pharrell, for example. Mm-hmm. These guys are yeah. artists slash geniuses in what they do. Magicians. Man. They are. They really are. Yeah. They don't get the appreciation and the recognition that they deserve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to go back to 966 one more time before we uh, move on to the next topic. Because when we spoke, you said that in producing that music video, 966, there was an element of... You know how they say, tell me without telling me, show me without showing me, Mm -hmm. like the underlaying. Yeah. There was a message about addressing racism Mm -hmm. in there. You mentioned it, and I forgot exactly what you said. Can Mm -hmm. you just talk a little bit more about that? Um, I mean, I love telling people to interpret my music the way that they want. And I also like reading in between the lines. So I want people to kind of, I wanted people to kind of see that with 966. So one of the the bars was, Got light skin, brown skin, dark skin, 966, it's a little culture with a little wisdom, speak a little magic, I'm not sure Simpson. He's saying light skin, brown skin, dark skin, and seeing the people in it, I got every race, you know, uh, that I could find. Um, in a week, keep that in mind. Like I did a casting call on my it's Instagram crazy. story. I was like, anybody want to be in a music video? Like, yalla. Um, you know, and I tried to include as many colors and races as possible, which are all Saudi. Like there was a lot of, you know, the comments on that video kind of proved the amount of racism that, uh, that is existing that a lot of people don't speak about. Locally. Yeah. Um, and it, it kind of, it didn't shock me because I knew it existed, but just seeing it there, like in the comments, I'm like, okay, this just, just kind of proves my point, you know? Because a lot of the comments were like, oh, no one in the video is Saudi. Like, I'm like, you know, they, it's not they all enough, are. Huh? Like, I don't understand. And just because of their color, whatever, you know? So, yeah, I mean, the, I guess the song kind of did the, the work for me. So know? it was, it was racism in Saudi, not globally. I mean, both. I would say both. Okay. But because yeah. it's the elephant in the room sometimes yeah, the, yeah. the racism yeah I mean there's a quote that I love um, and I, I like, first stumbled upon it when I was studying international relations unity and diversity I, I love that like I lived in Sweden I lived here I went to international school and I do see a lot of unity in, in diversity and I I love how you can meet a lot of people that are from extremely different backgrounds different races and different perspectives and you can still find something in common and you, Look at the things you have in common instead of looking at the things that kind of divide us, you know, apart. So, you know yeah. who gets it right? Mm. Holland, mm. the Dutch. Yeah, they get it right. Yeah. We spoke about your father and what he means to you, and um, we can go on on a separate podcast entirely about yeah. him because it's so refreshing. Yeah, I mean it. Um, we didn't talk about your mom and what kind of effect she's had on your life. Okay, so if you don't mind, no, of course, of course. Uh, mama's the behind the scenes of behind the scenes. You know, Baba's like there, everyone sees him, but Mama's, uh, you know. Um, she supports me behind the scenes in her own way. She's more traditional, but. Um, I think she kind of pushed me more in terms of like the education. Uh, she's a doctor, um, Tabiba, and she wanted me to be a doctor first, and it was it was always a battle, you know, between me and her. But I love that she pushed me to kind of like pursue education, no matter what it is. She's like, Mahma, you you know, go forward in terms of your career with music. I want you to get your masters. I want you to get your PhD. And when I was younger, I was like. 
ليش؟ like why are you pushing me? and then now I'm like no thank you for that you know and the jot factor the jack of all trades factor is from her like she's a doctor and she she's always dabbled in a lot of businesses you know what I mean she's always like فتحت a lot of مشاريع a lot of projects she never wanted to stick to one thing so that's kind of where I was like why just do this let's do this and this and that so so yeah I kind of um got that trait from mama and no why pick one thing so good combo mama and baba yeah. I was gonna say it's nice to have both sides of the coin Yeah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I mean, uh, I would say I was raised, I wouldn't say spoiled, but I was, you know, a little shwaya because it was just me and them. And it was very like all the focus was on me. I didn't share with any siblings or anything. So it was just very, um, always alayya. And I'm very grateful for that. But I also advise you, like, you know, I'm glad you have a girl coming on the way. Like, don't just have one kid because it could get lonely sometimes. So, but I am grateful for that. I feel like that, you know, shaped me into who I am kind of just writing solo for a lot of my life so yeah did she ever push back on your potential career you wanting to become a rapper did she ever say um can you go can, can you do can you do something else um she didn't understand it at first um even Baba <laughs> even Baba he wasn't like this from the beginning you know he was uh, it took a little bit of time to convince him because he didn't really I mean both of them didn't really see like what the potential was because okay you say music industry and what can I show them what rap song can I play on in car without it having cuss words or then you know rapping about something inappropriate and they'll be like yeah okay so you can do this i i was like god that do it i'm like there's nothing i can show him i was like yeah this is what i want to do it was all the latif you know so i was like you know it's got a bad rap <laughs> extremely bad rap and i was like that's what i that's what i want to change you know so with mama i think she tries to understand it you know because i don't think it you know has done the effect that I wanted to do yet. I need to, you know, produce more and make more for like mom to realize or a lot of people to realize, oh, okay, this is what she, you know, she aims to do. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, she supports me because she loves me, but she's not going to be like, yeah, I totally understand this because I think a lot of people don't, even me, I just like, I know this is going to go somewhere. I don't know where, but I know there's a good goal with it, you know? So yeah. It helped you surface. Yeah. And be noticed and have a platform. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. And um, and even if nothing happens after this, and I and I know a lot will happen after this, there's sure. you know already a win, mm-hmm. something in the win column. Yeah. You know you have a platform to spread the message that uh, you know you are striving to spread. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. That's the that's the goal. Yep. Do you mind if we do a live for like three yeah, four minutes? Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> what would you say today in your life? something that you do or an experience that you have, when do you feel most alive? It's a very, uh, very good question. Um, when someone asks me a question like that, I kind of think of like mental health. And it's a, it's a deep question to ask someone because I think I lost that feeling a long time ago. Like maybe when I was a teenager, I would feel alive. and But I think that kind of went with, um, you know, ups and downs of life and depression and all that. I only feel alive when I feel like I'm making an impact on someone else. If someone else is smiling from something I said or did or gave or whatever it is. I'm like, okay, it's good. Like uh, now I know I'm still alive. Like I know I'm doing something, you know. But if it's just something I do for myself, I don't, I don't feel joy. So anything I do that can put a smile on someone's face or affect someone in a nice way or something like that, then I'm like, yeah, okay, I, I feel good. I feel joy alive, you know. How about beauty? How do you define beauty or, or what in life is beautiful to you? Um, it's a good question. All my questions are good. Yeah, they're, they're very hard to think. Um, I want to say something deep, Shoya. I see beauty in everything but myself. I see it like, uh, from a, an outside perspective. I just, I appreciate a lot of small things and small details that I see in people, small like, I don't know, I notice things in people that they don't notice in themselves or they don't, if someone like loses one kilo, I'm like, did you lose weight? Like, did you, you know, did you, wow. did you, you know? I notice all these details, Observant. like, biziada, you know? And I, um, yeah, I think it's it's beautiful when you give back. I have, my whole life I've Amazing. been, uh, I've been a giver to a point where Hatta Baba's like, Ya khalas, yani, shway, shway. No, I've been like, since I was a kid, I don't know, like, where it kind of stems from. I think maybe from being an only child, it was kind of, oh, sorry. Right on time. I need to, (laughs) (laughs) 
I need to remind mama okay. to take her medication. So glad Instagram we, Live gets to see this. <laughs> we have a pact that wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I need to remind her and know uh, to take her meds. That's the sweetest thing. So, bravo. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to say goodbye to you guys. You can catch the episode in two weeks. We've got Jada here over and out. Right. Yeah, before your mom, uh, you were talking about giving back mm -hmm. and how beautiful that is. Yeah, so they kind of, <laughs> and Baba, is, he's looking at me. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I gave a lot in my life and I never regret, you know, doing that. But it's it has reached a point where I take Minandi and I, and I give to a point where I don't have anything left for myself. But I think that's one of the... Um, attributes that I like most about myself that I always you know um, love to give and I feel like the more that I grow and the more that my child on my platform grows whatever I'm doing is for people it's not for myself you know especially in terms of music I don't do it for me I do it for whoever can get impacted or whatever effect it can have on inshallah one person like that's that's enough for me I don't do it for myself I actually like you know shocker I don't listen to music I used to love music and I couldn't do anything without listening to music you know I don't I don't, I enjoy silence more than... She has a good heart, huh? <laughs> so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't listen to music. I enjoy silence more than anything. Um, before I used to, I can't do anything without like music on. Um, but yeah, I think a few years ago, maybe two or three years ago, I just started to kind of enjoy the silence. And I feel like my thoughts and my yani, ability to write is not yani, influenced by anyone else's lyrics or anyone else's, you know... Yeah, any type of music or because I feel like when you listen to a lot of other rappers or a lot of other songs or genres or whatever it will affect of like what comes out of you so I just feel like let me see what what comes out of me without being you know influenced by anyone else's music so I yeah me and Baba sit in the car for like an hour like going mashawir or whatever and there's no music on it's just us enjoying the silence and I uh, I used to it was one of my, I think it was one of my fears before to if it's just a room just full of silence, I'm like, oh my God, like I can't, like I just need, I need to put on a show, some something like just background noise. Yeah, I need something. I like lose my mind if there's no sound on. And now I just, I love silence. Do you meditate? Um, I try. It doesn't really work. I'm a very like, now I seem laid back, but I think me as a person, like Yara, I'm very like, I'm like the mihar like I'm, I'm very like, yalla, let's go, let's do this, let's do that, you know? So I just sitting and like, meditating just seems like my mind is does not go quiet so it's a bit hard for me you know it depends so for um, the people who can't tame their mind mm. and uh, achieve clarity mm. meditation is the number one recommendation yeah in the world but what people who do suffer from too much thoughts you know who are just anxiety and all that yeah the pharmaceutical industry mm. steps in and gives them pills yeah so they can make money yeah Pills and antidepressants only makes you dependent on those things. Mm. I like that we're going here now. Yeah. Because I know people yeah. who went on antidepressants and can't come off it. Yeah. I know people who had mental issues, depression, anxieties, panic attacks, you name it. Yeah. They would spend time in nature. Mm. They would work out. They would eat clean. They would get their two or three liters of water a day. Yeah. They would meditate. Yeah. They would not miss their five prayers a day. Mm -hmm. They would do those things that make them... And they have recovered to yeah. the best version of themselves. Yeah, I feel that too. I mean, I have my fair share, like, background with antidepressants. I, I hate Prozac. <laughs> like, just so bad, I hate Prozac. That, like, is that anti, an anti that's an antidepressant? Yes, it's one of the most, like, known antidepressants. Yeah, yeah I know that. I've heard that name a lot. I hate it. It ruined a very big part of my life. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still recovering from being off it. Um, I've been told not to stop cold turkey. But when I saw myself, like, literally losing myself, not able to to get out of bed it actually made my depression a lot worse i was like no like i'm not gonna let it control me and all doctors advised not to stop it i was like Hato. i just threw it in the trash and i was okay. like no I'm, I'm done that's amazing and you know side effects when you just stop something cold turkey but i'm like i don't care i don't yeah. want that to control me you know but i do feel like it did affect me i mean i'm i'm a very um i was diagnosed uh, multiple times before like uh, bipolar sometimes i choose to believe it sometimes i choose not mm. Someone, well, i'm a gemini what are you talking about like it's mm. just not bipolar so you know it depends mental health is always a struggle it's um some days i feel like i believe it sometimes i don't sometimes it's just up and down it depends like 
this interview wouldn't go this way today. If it, we had it tomorrow, it would be completely different, Jada. Like you, you don't know, you know. So, yeah, I think me as a person, I I wouldn't say I'm. You wouldn't get the same person every day. Like it depends. I'm a very like roller coaster, I guess, person. You know. Um, I try to. I wouldn't say fake, but as a Jada, I try to have like a specific. Um, I know, like this podcast, you want people to be real. So I feel like I'm opening up more. But as Jada, I'm like, what do you mean feelings? What do you mean emotions? Like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. What's up? You know? But then if we do go deeper and we talk about Yara and it's like, you know, I'm a very emotional person. And yeah, of course. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I like showing both. Do you think, are you, are you showing both at least, you know, since the last 45 minutes of recording this episode have both come out? Yeah, for sure. Especially now, like just talking about the, you know, the uh sensitive side emotions and all that like you don't you don't see that with rap like so far what i've put out i don't show that side who wants to listen to a rapper crying like it's not gonna you know what i mean i do want to address like mental health and stuff in my music i have a lot of ideas that i want to like insane ideas but it's just i think with time you know it will come uh there's a lot of stuff that i struggled with and i feel like visually like if we do a music video it's gonna be like insanely sick like with mental health with bipolar with eating disorders like i think I have insane ideas in the future to kind of address that in music videos. But for now, it's like, let's build the platform until you have enough people that want to listen to that deeper side. Because there's two types of people that listen to, I guess, music or rap music in general. They're the ones that want to bop their head and just have fun and forget life and not think about anything deep, you know? And there's the ones that want to listen to the lyrics and want to listen to what the artist is saying and the message that's there. So, you know, I want to try and play on both, you know? So it's not like, oh my God, it's Jad again, you know, deep, like, خلاص, يعني, you know? So I try to show you, show you. Keeps the audience on their toes. Yeah. Don't know what to expect. There's a nice angle there, actually, where it's not the same person. Yeah. And you actually appeal to a wider audience if they're... Exactly. Which one do you like more? Jada or Yara? You probably never asked that question. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a good one. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if I saw Jada, I might be intimidated by her. Like, I do understand. Sometimes people see the persona and they're like, Ah, oh, She's probably cocky. She's probably, you know, shy fun of She's dropout, whatever. Like these assumptions that I hear about me, I'm like, no, like. De- definitely the impression I got. Yeah. A lot of people think that, you know. Um, and then they meet me and then they're like, oh my God, you're actually nice. I'm like, surprise, <laughs> you know. Um, I like Yara's heart. I like Jada's confidence. So. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's. Yeah. Thank mm. you for asking that. Yeah. It's funny how when you heard it, you were like, I don't, in your mind. You yeah, were like, neither. I don't, I don't to, yeah. And then yeah. the answer uh, was v- like, you painted the picture perfectly in two lines. Mm. Yada's yeah. heart, Yada's confidence. Yeah. It's beautiful. <clears throat> I don't think we are done moving from mental health enough. There was something when you were talking, I just got like an analogy or a picture of how the industry works i want to go back to it for a second yeah and i couldn't help but think of a tennis court Mm -hmm. where the ball is mo or yara or jara the customer Mm -hmm. the patient Mm -hmm. and player a is big pharma the pharmaceuticals and player Mm -hmm. p is doctor player b is doctor Mm -hmm. and we are the ball being sent over the net to the doctor yeah the doctor takes our money, hits us back to Big Pharma. Mm. Big Pharma takes our money, hits us back to doctor. We are that ball that's going back and Mm. forth, back and forth. Exactly. You know what's out of this court? Mm. What I mentioned to you earlier, Mm. self-healing. Yeah, exactly. You know, if someone comes up to me and says, Mo, um, if I hear someone had a panic attack, Mm. someone close to me or suffers from anxiety, because I did, Mm. I had all those. Mm. I'd ask them a few questions about their lifestyle. And one of the first questions I'd ask them is, are you praying? Mm-hmm. Because praying, the energy that I get after a prayer yeah. is the same energy I get after 40, 50 minutes in the gym mm. in terms of how good I feel about myself. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Second thing is nature, getting out, journaling. Yeah. Meditation is, is there. Mm-hmm. You just do two two or three of those things, yeah. they will beat any Prozac, Mozac. Exactly. And, but it's almost like a life hack that mm-hmm. nobody 
very few go in that direction yeah and all go to conventional well well the doctor said i got it the doctor's trying to make a buck off you so he can pay rent mm -hmm. exactly yeah I mean, to be honest, like that's you remind me of Mama Shoya because when I first like you know started to get depressed or whatever, and she's like, Sully. I'm like, Mama, like you don't say that. Like you were just you know used to listening. You know, no, that's not something nice to say to someone who has mental health. And I just pray. Top, did you try it? And uh, and then that's also another stereotype that I like to break. People see what I look like, whatever, and they're like, they you start and that then comes and I'm like, just BRB, I'm gonna go pray, and they're like. What? Like, they don't understand, you know, what's happening. I'm like, no, like, why are you just judging by the, you know? So, no, I, I, I mean, I got closer to God, like, and um, me praying more helped way more than any, you know, any drugs I was given by his pharmacies, whatever. Like, it did help a lot, Saraha. Like a lot, because he is your best friend. Like a, a lot of times I'm just, you know, like I said, only child, I was alone in Sweden. That was literally the only thing that I had, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I mean, don't be, I would say, like, don't get reactive when someone says, like, try to get, you know, closer to God or try to, you know. I used to be very reactive. Mama tells me, go pray. I'm like, Itti ma tifami. you don't understand. Why? You're your doctor. Why would you say that to me, you know? And then uh, and I realized, no, she was actually right. I think the more you grow, the more you realize your parents, <laughs> your parents are right, you know. Absolutely. You know, yeah. You I'm, go st I'm still realizing that. Yeah. You go through that rebellious phase and you're like, you don't understand. Like, mama, baba, you don't get it. And then you grow up and you're like, oh, oh okay. You were, you were right. So, <laughs> so yeah. I told Adam to go to his room. I'm like, my God, this sounds like my mom. Yeah. If, uh, it's like history repeats. Yeah, exactly. 100%. <laughs> Any fears in life? Uh, I think this stems from me. <laughs> Why did you smile, Bubba? Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw a bit of movement, even those those lights are blinding. And I could see the silhouette of your father doing. What's my fear, Baba? Huh? He said no. He said no. <laughs> no fear. He shook his head. Um. I mean. Is there a fear that that he doesn't know about? I think, of not doing enough, not, I guess, being a nobody, kind of like. It's. I think it stems from me always giving and always trying to like any person that I meet. I try not to like be empty-handed, I try to give something, I try whatever it is, you know, it's uh, my love language, I guess, always giving to people since I was a kid. So I feel like me leaving this earth and not leaving something behind for people or can impact in any way, I'm like, oh, like my, my life was wasted. I did not do anything. I did not use my time wisely. I, Lesh, why was I here in the first place? You know, and it comes from that, like, I guess generosity that I have. Like whenever I get anything, whenever I get a paycheck, whenever I get whatever, I'm like, Gila, let's let's. I'm Oprah. Wallah, I'm Oprah. I'm just like, you get this, you get this, you get this. I'm just like, I just want to give stuff. Like I just want to give gifts. And I like Baba always says to me, he's like, you gotta save your money. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to give. Like I just doesn't matter. Like who I give it to. I'm just like, I just want to give back. And let's خلي نفسي. Why keep it to myself when you can make someone else happy with it? You know. So yeah, just leaving life and not making enough of an impact or like helping someone. Whoever it is, uh, that's like one of my biggest fears. Do you know how rare that is, though? Generosity. Is it? It's only getting rarer. Really? Yeah, people are. Uh, it's an all-time selfishness to the world. Mm. Come I on. I think I think living in Sweden showed me that. Saraha, I w have been in very like a lot of situations. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. like so individualistic. Like they don't, they do not care. Like I'm like, oh my god, that's really like that's, that's really sad. It's all to about me, me, me. Yeah, exactly. Capitalism. Exactly. I noticed that. That's why I don't have a lot of friends. Baba's my best friend. That's it. I don't really have a lot of friends because... You make me cry. <laughs> Khalas, wallah. I, me too. Like, I I used to have so many friends. Like, I was extremely social. Like, I planned my day. Okay, see this person from two to three, this person from... Like, all the time. Never free. And I realized the amount of generosity and, like, just me being there for people was way more than whatever. Like, I don't do it to get it back, but... I never received that like five percent from from uh, from those other people. I'm like I'm I'm done doing that, and I would rather save that for people that actually deserve it in the future and give it back to people that actually you know deserve that generosity. Because I've given a lot, and people just you know and I call me at three a.m. I'm like yeah, I'm a, you know I'm I'm here, I'm down, and I'm a you know like I'm ready to to be there. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter how long we've known each other. Like I I got your back. You know, I've, you don't expect it in return, right? No. Yeah, because then you'd be so disappointed. Yeah, no. Very smart. I mean, yeah, I never did it to get it in return, but I did go through a phase where I was very sad. I was like, I didn't need it, but I'm just like, oh, that's sad that you know that person wouldn't do that yeah. for you. 
but it's you know it didn't stop me from giving baba's like learn from your mistakes i'm like what i can't see <laughs> like i just i just kept doing it and I'm, i don't regret it at all like the stuff that i you know sacrificed and that i gave for people i don't i don't regret it at all i'm continue to be that person because i feel like a lot of times people are like me 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 like you said i know i know what can i do for myself i'm like no i give and rabbana will give back to you one day you know so your wisdom is someone of a 35 year old mm-hmm. okay uh but you're probably 27 25 25 mm-hmm. you are your wisdom is 10 years older thank you and at 25 yani it's by the way, I don't say things just to make people feel better. Like, ma ajamal. If it's not there, I just don't say it. Yeah. I will never say something if I didn't think it's there. Yeah. Um, keep that with you throughout your life. Because this whole, you know, Bob is my best friend, small circle, uh, generosity, a few other things you mentioned mm-hmm. is such a good trait to to have in life. Thank you. And at 25, no, sorry, 25, typically their best friends are you know, ashab or exactly. whoever. Your yeah. parents are not your best friend at 25. Yeah. Very rare, mashallah. Yeah. Good head on your shoulders. I think I moving to Sweden at 17, I grew up really fast. Yeah. I had to grow up fast. That to you. So, so yeah, I'm I'm glad for that though, mm-hmm. you know. Um, when you are growing up and a lot of trauma hits you and a lot of, you know, ups and downs, you, you hate it. But Saraha, I'm very grateful that I went through these things or else I wouldn't. You know, you know, be here speaking about the things that I want to speak about because, you know, there's beauty in pain. There's so much beauty in pain. I feel like a lot of people that are successful and a lot of people that have huge goals come. It comes from pain. It comes from something deeper. So I'm I'm glad that life hasn't been extremely easy. And I'm glad that pain was there because that's why I do what I do. That's why I want to keep doing more, you know. So, yeah. Why is this thing anyone has ever told you? Why not, Min Baba? Why not? We spoke about that earlier. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so many times, like, I just have these big goals. I'm like, oh, I wish I could do this, and I wish I could do this, and I wish I could be part of the UN, and I wish I could do this, and part of the parliament in Sweden, part of Marif Me. And um, I was like, why not? I'm like, Baba, like, what do you, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, why not? I'm like, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, before when I used to show you I care about numbers, I'm like, I want to hit a million views on this track. I want to, he's like, why not? I'm like, it's a nice way of looking at life. I mean, because I'm very harsh on myself and I'm, I would say, realistic slash pessimistic, Shoya. I, I wouldn't say I'm an optimist at all. I Actually, I feel like um, a wise way to look at life, and for myself, and I wouldn't recommend any but for myself, I felt like being pessimistic helped me more than being optimistic. Um, I mean, when I first went to Sweden, like I told you, I was smiling, I was happy, I was excited, I had like, expectations and I was like, very positive and I just, it just all kind of came crashing down and it all just hit me hard and I'm like, oh, okay. And that's what kind of shocked me and made me, you know, get low and depressed. And then when I started expecting the worst and then the bare minimum happens, I'm like, oh, okay, that's, uh, that's decent. But when you're like super optimistic and positive, life will disappoint you. But when you expect the worst and then you get ID and you're like, oh, today was a good day. I didn't, you know didn't die so we're, we're good you know so yeah I, I i feel like not expecting anything and kind of being sure uh, expecting the worst is is a good way of uh, looking at life so. so you think outside the box a lot what yes. box <laughs> exactly i love it um would you change anything about your life if you were born again and that might tie into a question of do you have any regrets mm. But looking back, is there something that you'd want to change with your life so far? I wouldn't say, no, I don't think so. I mean, before, yeah, I would be like, I wish life was easier. But like I said, beauty and pain. If I did not go through life, which happens to everyone, any whether you like it or not, um, I wouldn't be here. And it, it builds a lot of character. And I think if I was just, you know, Adi life, no problems, no no struggles. Like, what would I be accomplishing? I would probably be wanting a nine to five and not having a bigger goal than, oh, I want to do this or I want to do that, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of feel sad for people that kind of lived a life of privilege and haven't really gone through anything. I'm like, like good for you, but you know, like, that's, you know, it's a bit uh, very 2D, you know? And I can't have a long conversation with them. I just kind of not lose interest, but I'm like, Yani, you're, you're, you know, what are you speaking about? There's nothing deep you can speak about to that person because they haven't seen life yet, you know? Um, 
and yeah that's where the wisdom and you feel like i'm older it's because you go through stuff so i'm very glad that i that i went through a lot of stuff in life um yeah beauty and pain yeah i read a, a chart about easy versus hard mm -hmm. and if i can just try to memorize it it was hard days strong person easy life mm. as opposed to easy days mm. weak person hard life yeah do, do you see that yeah. like wouldn't you want to be the first yeah hard days strong person mm. easy life yeah yeah it's true i mean imagine it's sitting in a room and like everyone been through life and they have something to talk about and you're just there like like a sitting duck you know you will just you know there's there is beauty in it you know you can relate to other people cry together feel the same emotions feel the same pain i feel like you can connect with more people when you do talk about deeper stuff and more emotional stuff and mental health and and like pain in general yeah. than like oh let's party let's yeah. you know let's it's shallow let's, as, as yeah as you know what yeah when you're younger it's just like yeah let's have fun let's you know just friends and i used to be like that i'm just like i just want friends i just want people around me doesn't matter if you're a good person doesn't matter if you're going to be there for me in the future no i just want to and i realize i'm like if I really need, like, something happened to me and I really needed that person to be there, would they? And then, you know, I realized... It's almost like you don't want to know. Like, yeah. I never want to need them. Yeah, So exactly. it's not confirmed. <laughs> exactly. Because I, I know the answer to that yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. So... Just don't want it to be confirmed. Yeah, exactly. Something people should experience once in their life. Hmm. Um, Dropping a song? I mean, I don't feel anything I, when I, I drop, right? I knew you were going right? to say no. I know. I was kidding. Um... It's a good question. I think maybe we can circle back to it. We could, we could, we... yeah. Can I give you mine? Yeah. Heartbreak. Heartbreak. Yeah. Mm. Because you're naive until you have your heart broken. Mm. Makes you stronger. True. I, I firmly believe what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's true. Heartbreak taught me a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 17. Oh. And I was just, had my wits about me after that. Mm. Well, well, one second, you know, whatever you have now. Yeah. Uh, can be gone that's when i realized everything's temporary mm -hmm. that's when i realized that if what i have right now is not something that i'm enjoying give it a second yeah. it could be a year two three but everything is mm -hmm. temporary mm -hmm. um yeah. i think that goes back into um expectations mm -hmm. you know expect less yeah. like two bars the, the less you expect maybe the higher the happiness but with the more the expectation exceeds Mm -hmm. happiness takes a toll we'll circle yeah. back to think, your uh, answer I expect nothing appreciate everything yeah, yeah always really that's such a good way to live life yeah I think I think I know the answer I would say detox from everything in life like I you know when I made that jump from realizing that having a lot of friends and fake friends is like marudai kind of just a waste of time was when I I moved back from actually I had a lot of friends here and when I went to Sweden they all disappeared, you know, for some reason. And okay, I'm like, okay, cool, okay. Started my life again in Sweden. Started making a lot of friends. Was there for four years. Made a lot of close friends, you know. And then moved back to Saudi. None of them asked about me. They all disappeared. And I was like, I'm going to keep doing this effort and making friends and making connections just for them to disappear once I move. And um, like, you know what, let me try something. I just deleted all my social media, Instagram, Snapchat, all that. I just completely wow. deleted everything. Um, How long? For one month. Wow. And this was like before, like I used to post stories every day. I was very active. I used to have Snapchat. I hate Snapchat now, but before I used to like post every yeah, yeah. single no day. Yeah, uh, I used to post every day and then I just disappeared for a month and I was like, any, anyone who follows me, any, any friends or whatever, so you see someone posting every day and then they disappear for a month. Like you will notice, like even if you're busy with life, you know? So, and then I re-downloaded everything a month later. One message from one person. That was it. The Kidding. friend that I had back in Sweden. No message. way. Voila. And that's when I kind of woke up and it was it was really funny because like I, you know, downloaded it and I was like screen recording my screen and I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to get out so many notifications now. And I was like, ding. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay. Um, And that was kind of a huge wake up call, like insane wake up call because I could have died and nobody would have known, you know? And that's when I realized I was like, you put in way too much effort and attention for people that don't, don't deserve it. Not many know? would have shared that story. Yeah. You know why? Uh, why? Because it shows you the reality of social media. Because people like sharing what makes them look good. Exactly. The story you just shared mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily make you look good. Yeah. And you shared it. Yeah. 
oh yeah, I'm a loner. Like I don't care if anyone's gonna say, oh my gosh, she doesn't have friends, no. <laughs> yeah, and I don't mind that. You know, I used to uh, like I don't want that fake like look. I'm gonna post this and look like I have like an insane life. No, I'm pretty much in my room it's most really of the refreshing. time, chilling with Baba, yeah. just you know, uh, dealing with life. Yeah, I need mean, not really. Relax. I was think I would think I'm. I became very socially awkward. I used to be very social. Very now I'm like, let's avoid people as much as possible. You know. So, uh, so yeah. yeah. With age, I think you know we just become more selective. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. To be forensic with the type of energy you allow into your area exactly. of boundaries. Yeah. Is top level self care. Yeah. Thing is, I let now I let people in, but I don't. And I don't know how to explain it. It's more like if you need help, I'll give you. But that's it. Like, I'm I'm not going to be like, a, like, oh, sorry, I can't help you. No, like that generosity is still there. Even if I feel like those people don't deserve it, I'm still very, like, I'm there. Faza. I'm always there to help. But I don't expect more than that. I'm like, just help. And then just, that's it, you know? And uh, yeah, I think um, my advice would be any kind of for people that kind of want to detox. Um on um, whatsapp you'd have like a lot of chats i started when i was like what what is this serving me what purpose is this serving me my chat i have like two groups work or whatever and i have bob and mama that's it i don't really have any chats and that kind of like woke me up and and when i did that social media detox and whatsapp was gone i was like whatever chats continue to come every week those are the chats that you keep because those are the people that are talking to you every week and asking about you and checking if you're alive the chats that are like once every few months or once every year i'm like why are you why are you there so mentally i'm just like khalas these people don't don't exist in my life, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. It was just a thing that I did for myself to kind of show, like, don't expect to get a, to get a hadith ala nikah, you know? So, so, yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Uh, something people don't know about you, either one of you. Uh, I think I showed a lot of it in this, uh, this podcast. I don't think people have uh, seen this side, Katir. Okay. Um, yeah, like, no rapper, Jara, yo, what's up? I'm cool, you know? Like, there's no emotions. It's like this persona that comes on. And I feel like I was more Yara in this interview than I was in anything else, yeah, you know? Um, so, yeah, one of the things would be I am an emotional person. I'm a very sensitive person. And I'm very, I notice Shia Katir, you know? I'm very sentimental. And I don't think people know that if they just know Jara. I don't think they know that until they meet me personally. They're like, oh, okay. You're not the same, like at all. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, me like me today. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a bit taken aback Surprise. by what I'm seeing. Yeah. 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 And I think that's the beauty of these one-on-one conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I fell in love with, honestly, not 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 to talk about what the hell it is that I do, but podcasting in general, because mm -hmm. it's one-on-one. -on -one. There isn't a hundred people. It's not like yeah. these, you know, talk shows, Fallon or yeah, exactly. That person kind of, you know, breaks character. Mm -hmm actors musicians artists they all do when they go on the big ones yeah they you know they take their glasses off and they have a heart to heart yeah and you see the real person yeah that's why the industry mm -hmm. has really become a major player in the media game yeah 100 percent. yeah i mean before i could never listen to like a podcast i'm like i'm gonna hear this person talk for like two hours I mean, shoot me but then now podcasts over like songs and music any day, like I'm like, oh, wow, like it really feels like you're getting to know that person. So, yeah, podcasts are sick, man, like insane. So something you wish to accomplish before. Uh, before our time is done. Um, I feel like there's so much that I want to, but I cannot like pinpoint them and put them as goals i feel like where i reached now which isn't that far but i feel like where i reached now came organically without me planning for it and it just you know rabbana just kind of happened alhamdulillah and i feel like that will continue to happen without me kind of you know i would say push yourself but don't pressure yourself if i have like oh i need to do this and it's it's gonna become like not organic and i'm gonna put way too much like pressure on it so it's like one of the the close goals that i would say i would want to achieve is um I want to get my master's in IR, international relations, and I want to get my PhD because I want to break that stereotype and know you need to drop out to pursue art or pursue music. Like, I, I really don't like that, Saraha. Um, and yeah, I kind of want to prove that you can do both, like Dr. Jara, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I really want to... might take a while to get there, but I, I would definitely love to change my username to Dr. Jara. So, 
yeah, I think it's going to be cool. a good ring to it. Yeah. And that also surprised me when we spoke that you said that you want to go do your master's. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I didn't anticipate that. Yeah. And and that's, again, like a, a, a check in the ambition yeah. or ambitious column of yours. Yeah, I feel like, you know, they kind of like complement each other in a way. Like I feel like soft power is way more stronger than hard power these days. You know, influence is with what you can do with the platform is way more than, you know, like it's it's insane. And me using whatever I'm going to learn in my master's and what I already learned in international relations and psychology and putting that in my music and kind of being like a Safira or whatever, or maybe being in the Swedish because I'm moving back to Sweden, right? So if I'm in the parliament or anything like that, the influence I can have through soft power, I think is is any very good, good combination between music and what I studied. So... Yeah, I would say like any, they complement each other very they nicely. Do. They do. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if I didn't do music, I would probably be writing articles or something. But who's going who's gonna to sit and read these things? <laughs> like, it's a very niche, you know. Music, uh, music travels. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. How, how come back to Sweden? Uh, masters. In you can do the masters there. Yes. A couple yeah. of years. Mm -hmm. come back. Yeah. And so. I feel like I need it because I feel like I, when I moved back to Saudi again, I isolated, I isolated myself like busyada, you know, because of the, I told you the back and forth and not losing friends. And then I'm just like, I'm coming back now. I know my plans is to move back again. So I'm not going to go through this a third time and waste energy and just, no, I'm going to, you know, do my best, graduate, top of my class, inshallah, which alhamdulillah happened. And I'm just going to, you know, focus on my grind, focus on my, you know, uh, lyricism and improving. And then I'm going to move back to Sweden and see what happens with the, uh, with life any so yeah love it yeah um before we wrap it up i um i want to hear you rap oh yeah i knew you were gonna put no but listen we don't have to if you if you don't want to like i wanted to like get one of my favorite beats and you can think about it freestyle rap beat hard room rap okay oh my god i see you on this oh my god Okay. Okay, so I start from the top. I said, nice. Louder, lower. No, it's good like that. Okay. From the top, people. Okay. We got Yara in the studio. No pressure, huh? Okay. And a ball like me. Alpha bra and the bomb that some yavil ha. Send in dog, up for van, over driver yog. Sitter in your room, bar a snack and water leaf. Send your sitter and some in my tank, or your warrior's creep. On varied dog, so me teach them make knee. Knee, we meet yatta, or did the hoodie believe? Lady may sprocket tea, bar et or. Knew it ready or at all, did the voya yor. To prat them in me, the electro hit the vimy sword. Adric frog a day may, um, who ya more. I'm leaving buff for me care, um, deva. Force war. I'm done. I'm done. I can't keep going. Oh, it was <laughs> so good. It was so good. <laughs> Thank you. And don't this, put me. A, don't put me on the spot there's a, again. There's a break <laughs> now. Maybe the Arabic. Last <laughs> last we're going it like that. Oh my god. I love it. I love it. I love. It. Yeah. By the way, if you said that no, I don't want to do it, I would have cut all that out. Yeah. And, I mean. Um, and if you still don't like it, I'll cut it out. No, it's just fine. It. Yes. Sounded okay. I was G ish Thank of you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, what are you What are you up to uh, besides masters? Like music, um, can we anticipate to see anything coming out in the next couple of months? Uh, when is this podcast? Gonna this podcast out? is going to come out in two weeks. I think Wakta will be my music video is going to come out. I think at the same first time. First week of September. Um, Mafrud, yeah, first week of September or last week of August. We'll okay. see. I think. Um, awesome. But yeah, it's a. Uh, should I plug it, Adi? Please, yeah. of course. It's called Afa. Um, I'll give you the visuals if it's. Uh, yeah, uh, you can put it maybe in the video okay. and the podcast. Yeah, it's called Afa. This song is like my baby because I feel like 966 was, I did it because I want to, you know, start somewhere and I want to, you know, before, well, before I was like, I'm never going to rap in Arabic. I don't want to rap in Arabic. Baba was like, you need to rap in Arabic. I was like, la, 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 la. no, 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 please. Like, no way. And I was like, this is, and you can't speak 
You know, I'm so comfortable now that we're doing a podcast in English. Like, I always worry that, like, oh, my God, Lazim Arabi. And, and I know I'm combining Arabic now. But I got a lot of hate for doing rap in English when I started. They were like, why are you speaking English all the time? And mm. I... I get it. I get and, it a lot. So. Yeah. And I um, I feel so like... you did the Arabic. That's when you... I had to. That's when 966, like, I was like, I need to... But by the way, you, you own it quite nicely. Really? Yeah. I felt like it sounded so off in the no, beginning, yeah? No, no. I, I, but all I, I I don't know your Swedish rap. All I've seen from you is the Arabic rap. Yeah. And I was like, wow, she owns that space. Yeah. Something that just came, it fell in your lap kind of. Yeah, fake it till you make it, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I did not feel comfortable. I was like pushing it for a year and Baba was like, Arabic. I was like, no, not gonna happen. And then I realized, you know, uh, when I chose to do 966, I was like, this is what people yeah. want to hear. And you can't, but you wanna you wanna twasl al right? You wanna send the message, but you're this fee lost in translation. So you need to do it bil Arabi, you need to do it in Arabic, and then when the platform grows, you can do it in whatever language you wanna do it. English, Swedish, whatever, French, Spanish, whatever language I wanna learn and do it in Wakta. But absolutely right. Right now you have to see where you are and aim for that. So that's why like Amazing. um so yeah, with Afa, I think it's gonna be the first track that I genuinely I would listen to. Like nine six six Baba please, and I'm like, oh my god, Baba, please. Like, خلص, like, you know, play it on National Day. That's it. I don't want to listen to it other than that. But um, but Afa, it's a track about, it's about a lot of things. I don't want to say exactly what it's about. I like people to listen to it and interpret it in their own way. But it's kind of about women um, being able to do what they want to do. It's um, kind of breaking expectations and kind of just saying, um, should I plug a line, do you it. know? Okay, so it's kind of like owning the stereotypes that are put on us. You know what I so mean? Good. So yeah, so good. Yeah, I try to always like before when I used to get bullied insanely in, in high school, like insane, like bullied. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like the ziada. So. Um, but, but for for what reason? Do you know? Um. I was a chubby mahajaba in an international school. You know what I mean? I was. Uh. You know. Uh. It changed a lot. I think people saw me now from high school. They'd be like. Yara, like what? You know what I mean? But the bullying helped, so thank you, you know. Shukran. Um but yeah, I uh what was I saying? I completely lost my track of that. And I'm so em- emerged in your story. Um, um you were talking about um the line of Madbah. Yeah, Shikosa. right. So own those stereotypes, you know. I'm before I used to get defensive, like, what do you mean we belong in the kitchen? No, I, I can cook. I don't mind that, you know, like whatever stereotypes you want to put on us women and you just just kind of own it and use it in your favor, you know. So, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, the gut in the song. I'm excited for yeah, it's people good. to. And the, the gut, I think, will only help it travel further. Yeah. You need a bit of swag. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely I, I have think, it. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, shortage of swag. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this, this table recognizes that. So, thank you, <laughs> thank you table. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, you know, I think being creative is is one of the things that I like pushes me to to want to keep doing music because I like saying things without saying it and I think that's yeah. what I try to push through my music and I you know regardless of Baba supporting me and my family supporting me my parents Yani I don't like it when people cuss in music I don't think you need to cuss especially in rap music like why Yani you should be able to play it with your parents you should be able to play it with your family it should be kid friendly like I want little girls and Yani yeah, kids to listen to my music and not be like oh my god so I kind of want to clean up what rap should be yeah, needs to be what people think rap is like you know what I mean clean that up sure. the I audience can... is then wider exactly you're not eliminating exactly demographics yeah like I know when I try to play rap in the car with Baba I'm like <laughs> yeah. I need to like sit before and try to filter it See out what, and make sure yeah. there's no and there's it's just, just one too many cuss words it's way too Sorry. much you know Sorry. yeah and um, yeah I think it just needs to be cleaned up and also as a woman like in it I just I don't see other you know international female rappers where I'm like oh yeah she's no, there's no representation with the mm. same like Mabada and you know Muslim rapper it's modest, amazing. you know. So thanks, Yada. Thank really you appreciated for your time. Who? I, took, I, I really, you say Jada, Yada or Jada, Jada? Sorry, Jada. I was about to get slapped. Um, <laughs> I took too much of your time. Thank you to your father as well for coming here. Um, two weeks or so, episode will come out. Um, and it's amazing what you do. You bring something fresh to our society, our country. Keep doing what you're doing. Only good things ahead of you, inshallah. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm super hyped and I'm glad you, you know, have this platform and you give it to, you know, a lot of voices that want to be heard. So I appreciate it. Thank you for You're definitely a voice that a lot of people are going to want to hear. Inshallah. So keep doing it and keep allowing us to hear that voice. Thank you. All right.
يلا all the best تمام. thank you thank you